What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's quick sensor tutorial, I'll be showing you quickly how to connect the BMP180 to the Raspberry Pi Pico W to start getting pressure, temperature, and altitude values in real time using this sensor with MicroPython and Thani. So if you're looking at this physical diagram, it's really easy to set up with I2C communication if you've watched this channel before. And we are using a BMP280 in this, in this diagram. Don't be alarmed, you can use the BMP180 for the same exact schematic if you are a beginner watching this video. It does share the same communication lines with the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So don't be alarmed, it's the BMP280 here. I just got lazy and I didn't want to make another fritzing diagram. So just go ahead and set up the same connections you would on the BMP180 as you would with this BMP280 here. That is, you have the, the VCC, or in this case called VIN, to this pin right here. And you have the ground pin, as you could see, the third one from the top there. And also you have the SCL and SDA pins, which are using pins one and two on the Raspberry Pi Pico W for that. And make sure not to, uh, to confuse the ground and VCC pins because that can potentially fry your sensor and you will have to get a new one. So be careful with those. And yeah, you only need those four jumper wires to get started and make sure it's plugged in. So that's all you need for the physical setup. Now let's jump into the code setup in Thani. So in order to get started with Thani, what we want to do here is we want to open a blank uh, piece of code in Thani. We can just go to here and click new file. And we just want to go ahead and copy and paste this code I have here, or you can go along with the video and type it in as I'm going along here, but I will put it in down in the description below. It's very simple code. So essentially what we're doing is we're just initializing the libraries here. Now we have the standard machine library, which comes with MicroPython if you have it installed on your Raspberry Pi Pico W or Pico. And also we have this BMP085 library. So in order to get this BMP085 third party library, what you want to do is you just want to go to the internet and you just want to search BMP085 MicroPython and you just want to copy or go to the first results and go to BMP085. And don't be alarmed, this library is also for the BMP180. Just because it says BMP085, it can be slightly confusing. So just go ahead and copy all this code here. And we're just going to go back into our uh, Raspberry Pi Pico W environment. And we're just going to go to the lib folder. And we're just going to create a file called BMP085.py, which I already did in our lib folder. And you just want to go ahead and copy and paste the contents you have from GitHub into this folder. And that should allow your Raspberry Pi Pico W to find it during runtime. So that's pretty much it for this library. And the reason we're doing it like that is because I couldn't find it in the manage packages in Thani. And sometimes you can't find packages here, so you have to go to GitHub and just paste them into your lib directory. So once we have that, we also import time just to delay the, the time between readings down here. And we initialize our I squared C object, which is the object we need to communicate with the device. So we pass that object into the BMP 180 uh, object for, our, for our, uh, our class for our library. And then we set some parameters here. So the important parameter you wanna focus on is the sea level pressure parameter. So this sea level pressure differs from area to area and this allows you to actually calibrate the sea level pressure to get accurate altitude values or else if you don't set this value you will get really wild values in some cases. So in order to get it, the best way you can get it is just go to Google and find if there is maybe an airport near you that's measuring the sea level pressure. So I live in Austin, Texas so it's very easy to do that because it's a major a city. So I just googled sea level pressure in Austin and I could show you that. So let's just search sea level pressure Austin. I already had the link open here, but I'll just close it. And thankfully the Austin airport gives that every hour. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy that value in, which I just copied before this video. And this is in millibar, so you want it to be in units of millibar, which is also HPA. So one millibar is equal to one HPA. So let's just go, going back to our code, we could just go ahead and copy that in, which I already did. And then once we have that, we just want to say while true, we're just going to get the temperature, pressure, and altitude values using this library. And also we just have the temperature degrees Fahrenheit there just for uh, our folks in America here, including myself. And then I'm sure the folks overseas will much more appreciate Celsius than Fahrenheit. And let's actually clean this code up a little bit. We don't we want to put some spaces around those plus signs. That was bothering me a little bit. And yeah, we just display it all in one line and we take the reading every 100 milliseconds, so a tenth of a second. And we're just going to go ahead and, and run this. 
Let's go ahead and do that. So we can see that we're getting multiple values every second there, which is nice. And I actually Google Earthed my altitude, and it's pretty accurate compared to this. Um, I was using a BME 280 in, a, in another video where I talked about getting altitude, and I'll link that right here. It was a lot more accurate than this. But this is giving me uh, values pretty close to my actual altitude here in Austin, so that's pretty cool. Let me know if you get something similar down below if you're having issues finding your sea level pressure because I'm actually curious to people living in other cities that aren't major cities if you can actually find such values to get the sea level pressure. Other than that, this is how you set it up end to end to start working with the sensor. As you can see, we're getting temperature, which is also very accurate. I'm looking at my, my thermometer in my house right in front of me. It's the same exact temperature. And of course, the pressure I'm sure is pretty accurate as well. And of course, Fahrenheit is just a conversion we did ourselves. So that's just for those Americans out there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there's a lot of beginner content like this for people who are straight up beginners with the Raspberry Pi Pico W and sensors, working with sensors for the first time. We also have much intermediate content in this field of IoT and sensors. And we also have much code on full stack examples and Python examples just to become a better coder overall. So if you are just a programmer, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there's a lot you can learn. I generally think so. And once again, guys, stay tuned. Thanks for watching and take it easy. Thank you.